Starting off this hour is Fred in Dallas. Hi, Fred. How are you? Good. How you? Can I, better than I deserve. How can I help, sir? Yes. Um, we are the proud owners of a of a um, uh, dead end construction company, and we're selling that, selling our house, and um, trying to pay down all of our debt. Pr- proud, and, owner, proud owner was a sarcasm. Yes. Okay. I got you. So anyway, um, we're hoping to pay down um, all but maybe thirty thousand of our debt. Okay. And the question is, moving forward, I've, I've got it. I've landed a job. Okay. And um, but with selling our home, we're going to need a thinking of living in an RV because my job will be traveling um, and possibly have needing to buy a new truck so that it's roadworthy. My question is, by paying down this debt, is it a wise thing to to do a little bit of debt um, to go forward? Like I said, because there's going to be travel involved, and so just a cheap car is going to work. Mm-hmm. So w- you're going to sell your home and go on the road. And how many kids do you have? Three. Okay. This is sounding less fun every moment. <laughs> um, what kind of a job are you taking? Uh, construction superintendent. Okay. And so you're going to be in a city for how long? Probably three, four weeks. No, sorry, sorry, eight, eight to nine weeks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, and how many different cities does this? Are they all a different one every it's single? Anywhere time? from Washington to Florida. Mm-hmm. So everywhere, okay. Correct. So right. that's why I say, you know, you know, I have a truck now that I'm working at selling, but I don't know that it's that roadworthy. Yeah. Um, well, what, what is? And, how um, many miles are on that truck? Two hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah. It's not real roadworthy. Okay. All right. And what do you? So why? I guess my question is, going from two hundred and twenty-five thousand in debt to seventy, is that a is that a good step, or well, I'm, I'm is that you know, I, I think some kind of a truck to to get by, the very minimal truck to get by, is is going to be an idea here. Um, um, trying to think through the best way to service this, though, because um, I, I I the way I answer questions on this show is is what would I do if I were in your shoes, and I can't see us loading up three kids living in an RV, uh, so I. I I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't do that. So it's hard for me to get my head around asking you to do it or being right. okay with you doing it because I'm a, it, it, you sound awfully desperate is what I'm hearing. You took a good job that pays well because your, your construction company is going down and you're getting rid of it. I got that part. Right. You're a responsible man. Thank you for being a good husband and a good dad. Now packing them up and putting them in the RV and heading off to Beverly. Uh, I don't know about that part. Um, I'm wondering if you don't need to, the home you're selling is how much in debt? It's about 90 and our realtors think she can get about 180 for it. And that's going to clean up a whole bunch of your mess then? Yes. Okay. So let's try this for six months. And then if you want to change your plan, change it. Um, If I were in your shoes, I would rent something for my family to stay in. They're in the town that they're used to living in or, or near family. If you want to move them, that's fine. Is there family in your area? Uh, yes. How long have you lived there your whole uh, life? About nine, nine years. Okay. And so you got, you got some social roots, church, whatever, family support for the kids and wife, and you commute for six months and let's come in on the weekends and take your truck to the site and drive it for the six weeks or eight weeks or at each site. And, and let's just do a dad travels for a living thing. And let's not uproot the whole freaking family. Um, Even if they're okay with that. Yeah, I don't, I mean, it sounds like an adventure for the first 20 minutes. You just put three kids in an RV, dude. Um, yeah. It just, I mean, you can do it if you want to do it. I, it's, it's your decision. I, I'm just, I am bound by you know, being 
being honest enough to say, I personally can't get my head around doing that, so I'm having trouble telling you to do it. And, right. and, 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 the and other I, part of that is there, there's a per diem per, per week, you know, which I think that my family could live on in that RV. Yeah, I know, but you could live on, you know, in a decent, you know, corporate type, cheaper hotel, the corporate hotel things that most people that do what you're talking about doing do. Very few people right. run around the country as construction supers. Lots of people run around the country as construction supers, but very few of them do it with an RV in tow with their family in it. Right. Most of them are running in and out of corporate hotels, and, and then they run back home on the weekends. And, and you know, you get you can you got your mess cleaned up. Your family can kind of get healed from all the debt and the the process you've gone through of closing your business and all that stuff, which is hard on you. And you kind of get your emotions back together. And six months later, if the RV thing still sounds fine and fun, and y'all want to do it, I'm not going to be mad at you for doing it. I'm not going to be mad at you for doing it today. I just I'm just a little bit afraid of it. Um, it, it, it number one, an RV is a very large purchase that goes down in value the worst of any possible thing they're absolutely horrendous i mean they make boats and airplanes look smart neither one of which are smart financially (laughs) okay but i mean they go down in value so fast i've got boats i'm not mad you know it's okay but but the the thing is it's just man you're gonna get stuck again in that thing yeah well that's what i'm afraid of and that's why i caught in so so i mean that that's just what's bothering me about it so i always like to try to you're, you're, you know, you changed careers, you're changing housing, and you're, you're, you're going through this process of gutting your life, kind of, and you're going all the way over to the edge of the pendulum swing. And I'd like to come back in about two notches and kind of give your family a break a little bit. And then six months will go by fast. I mean, after the first of the year, if everybody still wants to live in an RV and you've gotten stabilized and you want to go do that, then go do it. But I would try to tap the brakes a little bit and um, no pun intended. <laughs> and, and, and let's just let sanity return to your life and see if that still looks smart after sanity returns. Because you got stuff. you got so many variables flying around your head right now. It looks like a cartoon with the bluebirds flying around your head, you know. And, and um, that's just how it feels talking to you. I mean, you do what you want to do, dude. I'll be, I'll be here to help you and back you either way. But... Um, I think the selling the house and cleaning up all the debt, taking the new job, those are all smart things. Getting a basic truck, a real, real, real basic truck, not not, not a $35,000 F-150, okay? You don't need that. Uh, but something that you can get over to that location and then come back from there, um, you know, and, and you can commute a little bit. That's what I would do. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button to get the latest content and check out these other great clips from the show. You can do this. You know, that really is a message. Whether you've got $270,000 in student loan debt or $27,000, whether you've got a $50,000 income or a $500,000 income, 